I've been clamoring for memorable anime to come out for a long time. And I think the last time that was truly done was in 2016, which brought us major hitters that still continue to this day, like My Hero Academia, ReZero, and Bungo Stray Dogs. It brought us huge hitting movies like A Silent Voice, Your Name, and In This Corner of the World. This is in no way a complete list. There were many well-received anime that have just gone under the radar, weren't talked about a lot back then, or that are just as good as the ones I've mentioned, but I just haven't mentioned them. There's no arguing that 2016 was a big year for anime, arguably the best year since what we had seen released back in 2006. But do we need to wait another 10 years for another great year like this? My assumptions, based on what I'm seeing, say that we might not have to. This winter season, upon a first glance, isn't that strong. The biggest hitter might just be the Attack on Titan continuation, which, depending on the pacing, could end up being the very conclusion of the series, or we might have to wait until a film is released to finally see the ending animated. There's surprisingly very few sequels this season compared to last winter, and a ton of new meat that may or may not end up hitting harder than expected. It's the spring, however, where things start to look a lot brighter. Although the spring is looking to be carrying more sequels than the winter, it's the lineup of those returning shows that are starting us off nicely. Firstly, Shield Hero is returning for season 2, as is Kaguya-sama with its third season. Then there's Ascendance of a Bookworm, and the return of Blackrock Shooter. Which means, there's a sequel for everybody this season. But it's some of the original meat that is starting to look way better than the stuff I've seen recently. Of course, we have Spy Family, a highly anticipated Shonen Jump series coming from the exciting cross of Cloverworks and Wit Studio. But beyond that, Summertime Render has a great synopsis which kind of reminds me of a cross between Anohana and Kokoku. It's definitely the series I'm looking forward to the most. And then we have Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie, something in the more light-hearted direction, and maybe it's just the character design, but it's already screaming like I'm going to fall in love with this character. The manga seems to have been very well received, and described as more of a wholesome, less dramatic story than what we might be used to. Tomodachi Game also stands out to me as something that may look like more than it really is. I've seen comments about it where it might just be another survival game series, and that people are getting tired of the trend, but something that seems like a mix of Kokoro Connect and Liar Game is right up my alley. And no doubt it's going to hit big in a time when Squid Game is super popular. Beyond the spring, we've also got a lot more to look forward to. Namely, the return of a lot of classic or well-renowned shows that have been missing from our eyes for some time. We've got Bleach returning with a thousand-year blood war. The Devil is a part-timer, returning finally for its second season. And Made in Abyss is also returning. But the two most important pieces of this puzzle are new series this year. Chainsaw Man and Uzumaki. Chainsaw Man is definitely going to be one of, if not the most popular anime of the year. And there's no doubt, it will blow up the way Demon Slayer or Jujutsu Kaisen have. And Uzumaki has a chance to restore the reputation of Junji Ito's works in animated forms. Not like past attempts have gone over well, but this time it's actually looking promising. Of course, we have all of the other unannounced pieces of the puzzle that we might not hear about for some time still. Maybe they won't all fit together to make a year as great as 2016, but they might make the best year since.